asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. Well, I'm delighted to welcome him back because I think it was the end of last summer when he was last on, and uh, he should have been back since then, but it's good because there's a lot to talk about. He is a emeritus professor of geography at California State University. He's a learned man, but uh, a lot of our listeners would know him as one of the world's preeminent researchers on organised gang stalking, gang stalking targeted individuals. It's a very serious issue, and I suppose for a lot of people listening to this programme, Catherine Horton, PhD, the former um, Oxford PhD, coming on the programme a couple of years ago to talk about her experiences. And then, of course, us meeting Eric is, um, is how people came to be introduced to it on this programme. It's a huge issue and it's connected to many other issues. You know, cyber spying, the obviously the rollout of technology, 5G, the space fence, it's all connected, even weather modification, you might argue. Let's welcome back to the programme. Great for him to come back on and chat with us, Dr. Eric T. Carstrom. Eric, thanks for coming back. How are you? Uh, very good, Richie. It's good to be back with you and get a chance to catch up on uh, on these incredibly important issues. Hugely so important. I thank you. Not at all, not at all. Hugely important. And it is kind of strange that it was the, the tail end of the summer last time you were on with us. Now, I know you, you do your own uh, programmes. You write, of course, prolifically on your website. Folks, go to gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com. That's gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com. I will tweet a link out to that. Before we get into some of the terminology and some of the new terminology, if you had to, in, in 90 seconds or two minutes, Eric, for somebody who's brand new to this, bearing in mind this programme goes out on commercial radio people will be new to this if you had to explain to them what gang stalking is in a couple of minutes i'm laying the challenge at your feet eric the floor is yours go ahead oh my <laughs> well you can have you can have more you can have more than two minutes if you need it go ahead yeah exactly well you know my my website has an awful lot of information on this and uh, to boil it down is very difficult but i just got a very interesting email this morning richie from another ti in the bay area and it, it relates what's going on with the gang stalking globally with the uh, cybernetics, which has been the big push in uh, the American military and other militaries since World War II to gain the control of the human nervous system and the human brain uh, electromagnetically and to merge these functions with computers. Really, I think this is the big uh, story behind the story. I think there's a lot of... Uh, people that are targeted individuals, quote unquote, that are non-consensual experimentees of, you know, testing weapons systems, non-lethal weapons, as they call them, which are directed energy weapons, Tesla technology. Uh, but I think the, the ultimate goal of all of this seems to be not only brain mapping, but brain cloning and, uh, um, and military and, uh, uh, uh and uh, elite control of the human mind and body. Now, these are very, very serious issues, especially since we never voted to uh, offer ourselves up as non-consensual experimentees. Yeah, and we're gonna, we've got plenty of time to lay this out over the next hour, hour, 10 minutes, if you've got that time, Eric. But oh, yeah. this is multifaceted. So it's, it's fascinating that you're talking about merging the, the the human biological body with the technology of computers, that's really important. It's like it's multifaceted because on the one hand, if somebody is a threat to the security of the deep state, well, they can be targeted. But this is almost like a kind of a multifaceted agenda or multifaceted technology. It can be used on people for so many different reasons. But ultimately what you're saying is it all comes together. We're, we're talking about transhumanism here, right? Yes, we are. Yeah, and that, that that pretty much is 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 where the yellow brick brick road goes to. We are being engineered for a future society when we're connected to some sort of cloud, some sort of super internet kind of program that will be basically. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to say that we will be. It'd be like an umbilical cord of sorts for humanity. Am I right? Yes. 
Yes. Um, I, I think that the, the goal is, you know, total control and has been uh, for a long time, you know, going back to the uh, Macy conferences of the late 40s and 50s that were very prestigious in the United States, but involved lots of Brits as well. Um, uh, the man, it was called the Man Machine Conferences. And uh, they, this came out of a book called Cybernetics written by Dr. Norbert Wiener at MIT. And MIT then became kind of ground zero for these uh, cybernetics programs, which do get into creating these cybernetic organisms that we call cyborgs or transforming the human into a cyborg. And I think that they, they have really made tremendous strides in this area. Now, the, the issue of targeting dissidents, absolutely they do that. Uh, there, there was a guy named uh, uh, Gerard, I believe, in the late, in late 1980s, who was one of the first to realize that he was being targeted by electromagnetic directed energy weapons, microwave uh, energy from satellites. And he, he realized that uh, they were choosing dissidents to do these experiments on because it was kind of a, a two for one for them. These pesky dissidents, dissidents will, will use them as our guinea pigs and will take care of them at the same time. So yes, it does fulfill the, ro the, uh, the purpose for the elite of, of getting rid of these pesky whistleblowers. Uh, and neutralizing them in you know multi-decade experimental programs, uh, but it also I think feeds into these larger uh, transhumanism issues, which you know both of these things involve uh, stripping individuals of their civil liberties, torturing them, um, no due process of law. So we've moved beyond uh, representative democracies entirely into a fascist system. Uh, where the people at the top are utterly beyond the law. This is what we have to address, I think. It's a matter of civil rights. It's a matter of torture. It's a matter of due process. Uh, we, have to, we have to roll this back with whatever tools we have. You believe that there are millions of victims of this, not hundreds or not thousands. Now, I'm, there's no point in me pretending to be you know, an aggressive interrogator of you. I'm sympathetic to this, to the idea this is happening, and I'm not going to pretend that I'm not. How do you go about persuading people that millions of people are being subjected to this technology, are being blasted with it, are being interfered with by it? Because you're a man of academia, Eric. You're, um, you're a man of critical thinking. Your career has been built around critical thinking and using those skills how do you persuade people that millions of people are being targeted with this equipment? Yeah, well, good question. Uh, you know, and the numbers, uh, we're struggling to, to try to come to grips with those. I think millions is accurate. But, but you know, uh, we now have a testimony from ex-FBI people like Gerald Sosby, who's also a trained lawyer and judge and also a targeted individual who made a comment recently on an interview with Ramola D. He said the FBI is spearheading the most colossal and evil attacks on people ever conceived on the face of the earth. And they are using deep space-based technology, biochemical, viral warfare elements and agents, and psychological warfare to destroy people. This is unprecedented in human affairs. There is no due process. No one is ever told why he or she is being attacked. It's a secret program. They don't want to have to explain what they're doing. Okay, they well, you asked yeah. me how, how I would approach somebody who was not, uh, you know, not aware of this and maybe skeptical. Well, I think I think I'll continue. The FBI, this is Gerald Sosby speaking, ex-FBI whistleblower. Our FBI has control over every agency in government. The CIA has total access to everything. They are the secret government. The FBI and the CIA are like governments unto themselves. They are sovereign states. Our government is not only doing this to its own citizens, they are doing it to other civilians around the world. The United States is making a lot of enemies. Ordinary people everywhere see what these evil intelligence agencies are doing, the FBI, CIA, NSA, NSC, DOD, Department of Defense. That's not good for our own national security. And that's a very interesting perspective. I mean, speaking of national security, I mean, if, if the rest of the world uh, comes to realize that the U.S. government is spearheading uh, direct attacks on their civilian population, uh, they, they might object. But I, I'm afraid the real story, Richie, is that most other governments 
are entirely com complicit in this program. That was the next question, because there will be people thinking, well, you know, this will be, uh, people will say, well, what, is this a, a US stroke Israeli project or plan, or is the technology and is the research available to the deep state factions in other countries? You know, MI6 here in the UK, you know, the, the DVD in Germany, the, presumably these spooks have access to this stuff as well. Yeah, and you use the right word, Richie, the technology. What, what that refers to, I, I've heard it used a lot, the technology, kind of refers to total individual control technology. <clears throat> and this system that connects supercomputers with satellites with your brain and, um, and then intermediaries to actually monitor the brain wave activity of your brain. Um, this is very hard to digest for average people. But in a world now covered with cell towers and satellites, um, uh, people need to wake up to the power and the effects uh, of these uh, electromagnetic waves, as well, perhaps, as scalar waves. I know less about that, but both are, you know, really products of Tesla research that's over 100 years old. Eric, but, um, Eric can I ask you this? Are there symptoms? Um, I'm getting, obviously, dozens of tweets and Facebook messages are flying in as well. And we, we always nod to the skeptics, but I've asked the question already about, about um, you know, people finding it difficult to come to terms with this. But, but there are a lot of questions, really good questions about symptoms. Now, when I spoke to Catherine Horton a couple of years back, and Catherine came to me out of the blue and spoke to me at length privately. And I said, well, look, the program has always been a platform for people to come and say, to, to explain their experiences. And of course, I would never say no, but I was kind of sceptical, Eric, to be honest. And I did say that to Catherine. But she came on and she spoke in great detail and great, you know, great passion about what was um, happening to her. And it was um, one of those kind of moments, really, for me. And she talked about specifically the, 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 the difficulties, the physical difficulties that she was going through. And people are asking us based on that, what are the symptoms? Are there things that happen to people that are exclusive to people who are targeted individuals who are being blasted with, I shouldn't say blasted with, but who are being targeted by the technology, specific symptoms? Oh, yeah. Well, typically, you know, the, the uh, person who is, has been watch listed or put on the terrorism watch list in the, in the case of the United States, about three million, supposedly, uh, are then given a special category of classification. They are they are uh, considered non-investigative subjects, uh, handling code four, uh, silent hits. This is what the police department would see. Uh, and uh, so they are treated differently for probably because they're in the program. But yeah, they would experience uh, the stalking, of course, you know, the mobbing of, of uh, you know, hostile strangers. Uh, which is a very elaborate system unto itself. But they would also experience uh, uh, the uh, directed energy uh, weapons. They would, they would probably have tinnitus in their ears, this constant ringing or buzzing sound. Um, they would uh, eventually, many would, would experience, of course, the inserted voices, at, you know, microwave hearing, synthetic telepathy, voice to skull technology, which was developed by the CIA and others back in the 70s. Um, this is not a mystery. I mean, that you can find the patents. Uh, you can find who invented these things, and you can find many cases in which they've been used in the military context, such as the 1991 Gulf War. Um, all these things then are because you know are experimental weapons for the DoD, the Department of uh, Defense, which has a budget now approaching 800 billion dollars a year. So, in a sense, you could say that the U.S. economy is absolutely been since World War II. We've been a war economy since World War II. Um, and uh, so it's a permanent war economy and they drive the research with their grants, etc. But, you know, Richie, I just wanted to finish up on that earlier question of yours. Yeah. OK, do we have a, do we have a new Cold War between the United States and Russia uh, with these psychotronic weapons? That's a very interesting question. And, and there's different opinions. Certainly, we had an old Cold War. Uh, you know, some people think that the Cold War was really about 
the development of these electromagnetic uh, psychotronic mind control weapons. That was the subtext of what was going on between the Soviet Union and the United States. And they were, uh, you know, their research was just, uh, it's hard to say who was more advanced. I think the U.S. was probably always a little out in front, but not by much. And so the question is, okay, now are they cooperating, cooperating or were they cooperating then? And I believe, yes, I believe they are cooperating at, at the highest levels. So there might be the appearance of a Cold War resumed now uh, with these mind control weapons. But in fact, I think the governments are operating uh, with the same basic strategy of controlling the domestic population with these with these uh, technologies. And this is, you see, this is, I, I would have to... I would have to entertain this, and I, and, and, I, and I am entertaining this because I've said this to people before. You know, Russia might be on the right side of, the, of, of what's happening in Syria. In fact, I believe they are. You know, the Syrian government hasn't brought the lunatic Wahhabi jihadists to its doorsteps to cause chaos. Western intelligence agencies did that. There's no doubt about that. But I've ultimately believed, and you're you're saying that. May I, you know, that I'm not crazy, that I might be on, onto something when I think that there is a hierarchy and it goes beyond governments, it goes beyond sovereignty, beyond borders, and it is way above the pay grade of the likes of Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump and Theresa May. And, I, and I'm, that's what I've begun to believe. Well, I've believed it for some years. And it's a brilliant, um, it's brilliant that you're bringing that up because if the agenda is a global one, it's got to transcend petty squabbles between the leaders of nations because it goes above them. It goes way above them. Let me re- remind our listeners, Dr. Eric T. Karstrom is live on the line uh, to us. Uh, it's great to have him back. Gangstalking, mindcontrolcults.com is his website. Eric is an emeritus professor of geography at California State University, but he's become well known for his research into gang stalking and mind uh, control. And I suppose, you know, you look at mysterious things I'm a news hound, of course, Eric. I'm sure you are as well. Lately, we've had two or three high-profile cases where convicted murderers have sworn and sworn and sworn that they weren't operating of their own volition. We have a nanny called Yoselin Ortega who has just been convicted of murdering two babies in New York. It's a terrible story. She was caring for the babies. But she swears to Jesus and puts her soul in the way of hell and damnation. She says that she was hearing voices and that the devil told her to do it. And when I hear those stories, Eric, I'm not looking to excuse or to give her a pass. She might have murdered the babies in cold blood. I don't know. But you have to wonder, Eric, don't you? You have to wonder about that. Oh, well, you know, (laughs) Uh, Richie... um in the uh, 40s, during World War II, there was a, uh, an American uh, a psychologist named uh, George Estabrook's PhD, hypnotist, who said that he could create a Manchurian candidate assassin by fragmenting the personality of that individual through, through hypnosis so that one personality would be triggered to commit the crime and then they would be triggered back to their alter personality with no memory of the crime. Okay, so this is 1940s. And then after that, with the CIA, with their MK Ultra and Bluebird and Artichoke and all these mind control uh, programs that they inherited from really from the Nazis, uh, from uh, the concentration camps, um, and then the paperclip Nazis coming to America, this became you know a major major push of the United States government, all top secret. So absolutely, this technology has been around for a long time. I, I 1,000% believe this this woman. Uh, even though I don't really know the specifics, there are so many examples of this. This course called The Manchurian Candidate. And uh, a movie came out in 1962 called The Manchurian Candidate. Yeah, yeah. A programmed assassin that Frank Sinatra actually did a fabulous job of acting in. And uh, this was the year before Kennedy was assassinated. And there are many people who were right on top of things who believe that uh, these technologies were probably used uh, in that, uh, that hit that professional assassination of Kennedy. Uh, Milton Klein, the psychologist, for instance, uh, a hypnotist said, I can make a patsy in three months. It takes six months to make a assassin. Imagine so, that. So you could have a situation where, and again, this is completely hypothetical, 
somebody might say, well, why would anybody want to get the nanny to kill the two babies? It could very well be a test run or a dry run. I mean, we're, we're dealing with sick, twisted entities here. We're not dealing with regular human beings who, like you and me, Eric, who, you know, we feel guilty when we snap at our wives or when we have an argument with our friends over this over the ball game we get guilty oh, yeah. I, sh- I shouldn't have said that and you know but these people have no remorse they've no no empathy so it's very possible that it might have been a dry run i mean i'm convinced that some of the big mass shootings of recent years not just in the last two or three years but of you know the last two or three decades i'm convinced that some of those were perpetrated by young men whom were chosen to do that and were uh, basically attacked using this technology. I'm convinced of it. Without being able to prove it, I'm convinced of it. Go ahead, back to you. Yeah, you know, and there's a lot of good movies about this now. You can watch the Jason Bourne movies and see this uh, super soldier. Uh, There's, you know, there's a lot of truth in that. There's also a lot that they leave out. But yeah, think of programmed and divided personalities with technologies that have that the CIA perfected back in the 50s and 60s and 70s um, to, to you know, make hundreds of alter personalities to fulfill various functions so that the human being then becomes a weapons platform that can be triggered either by hypnotists or even remotely through, uh, in fact, even in 1963, they had RHIC, Radio Hypnotic Intracerebral Control. They could trigger one personality into another to say create a, you know, an assassin, uh, back in 1962 and 1963. And Russ Dizdar, who wrote, see, I have had to read widely to try to understand this. Russ Dizdar is a Christian minister who was actually in the occult for a while. And he's been trying, you know, trying to beat, beat back the Satanist agenda uh, for about 40, 50 years. He estimates something like 10 million programmed uh, satanic super soldiers exist in America and maybe 100 million in the world. Uh, So these individuals then would be victims of this kind of trauma-based mind control programming, um, which now, which used to require all kinds of uh, systematic trauma to young children at six and less, but now can be done electronically. So uh, you don't have to bring somebody into a, you know, a special setting to do it. This can be done electronically. So, um, wow, yeah, Eric, how Eric, many people there are. Let me ask you this. Are we seeing the evidence of what you've just described on our television screens every day when we see an unarmed man was shot dead by a police officer or a couple of police officers beat the bejesus out of somebody? Because a day doesn't go by without an example of extreme police brutality. Now, there might be people listening to this program in the United States, and I'm sure there are, and they might say, ah, Richie, the police here, there there have been rogue cops and brutal cops since time immemorial. But I tell you what, Eric, I don't believe so. I believe that in the last few years, the police in some parts of your country and in some precincts have become absolutely psychotic in the nature, in terms of the nature of what they do and how they behave. And I wonder, is that evidence of what you've just been talking about there? I believe it is, but I think there's another dynamic, which is that a lot of our police chiefs have gone over to Israel to be trained in these militarized tactics, um, which, you know, consider, you know, all of the American people, uh, you know, perhaps as the enemy just much like the, the Israeli uh, forces would look at the Palestinians. In other words, this is a group of people to be subdued and to be controlled and uh, to be tortured when needed uh, to keep everybody in line. And uh, so we have a lot of our police that are going back and forth. Our FBI uh, are all ganged up with the police, and so our police are, are training with the FBI. And Israel is involved with every step if yeah. you listen to the K. Griggs interviews which I, I've transcribed now on my website. She's a remarkable lady who was uh, a very old family in Virginia, descendant of James Madison, who was married to one of these uh, programmed super soldiers, you might say, in effect, an assassin with the Marine Corps, who had a tremendous drinking problem. And although he was a robot for most of the time and when he was doing his uh, operations, for instance, but he drank a lot and he talked a lot when he was drunk. <laughs> basically told her everything he knew and and she's gone on on uh, on tape with some interviews that are extremely revealing 
about how the upper echelons of government operate, the brotherhood, she calls it. This is this is extraordinary and it's hugely important. We, we have questions, of course, about fifth generation 5G and we'll come to those in a minute. It's four minutes to the top of the hour. I just want to mention a friend of mine, Mark Moore, and Mark got in touch with me um, about two years ago to ask me to cover this issue because Mark is convinced that his brother, who's sadly not with us anymore or, or with Mark and his family, was a targeted individual. And um, Mark, I, w we did that, we covered the issue and I've kept in touch with Mark ever since. And he got in touch with me today when he knew, when he heard that Eric was coming on and he asked me, would I mention something? So I'm going to mention it now. There is a YouTube channel called TI Television and TI stands for Targeted Individuals, TI Television. And they've apparently set up a helpline for people who think they might be affected by this. Their YouTube channel is dedicated to profiling the testimonies of targeted individuals in the UK with a view to exposing what's happening to them and raising awareness of it. So they have a helpline and Mark has asked me would I give out the phone number. So I do. Now I've not met the lads from TI Television personally so I can't endorse them but Mark Moore, my friend, is no, um, you know, he's no idiot. He wasn't born in the last shower and if he endorses them I'm happy to give out the number. So if you feel that you've been targeted or that this issue means something to you, you can phone Tesh, and Tesh is spelled T-E-S-H, that's Tango Echo Sierra Hotel, Tesh. And Tesh number is 07843712542. And I am going to tweet that out now in a minute. 07843712542 and Tesh is the contact. It's TI Television on YouTube and I am going to be speaking with these guys behind TI Television, maybe girls as well, maybe guys and gals, in a couple of weeks' time on the programme. Because, you know, you talking about the amount of people, the numbers of people affected by this, uh, Eric reminded me to uh, to mention that. I'll tell you what we'll do. We need to take a two-minute break, a very quick break. When we come back, we'll have plenty more from Eric T. Karlstrom. Um, we will talk about 5G, the rollout of that, and that's causing consternation, not just here in the UK, but in many places around the world. And I can't wait to hear what Eric has to say about that. Eric, you're happy to stay with us then? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm here. Fantastic. Well, if you want to grab yourself a quick cup of coffee or a quick glass of okay. water, we, we've got about two, two and a half minutes before we're back. So Eric is going to stay with us, which is great. Tweet at Richie Allen Show. It's at Richie Allen Show on Twitter. And for the moment, for the last time, for the moment, the helpline number, if you think that this is an issue that is affecting you, it's 07843712. 542. This is your Richie Allen Show, live on Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, TriggerWarning.tv. We're on TuneIn Radio, of course, and RichieAllen.co.uk. Back in two minutes. There's a place high in the mountains of Spain, a sanctuary where souls gather from all around the globe to learn about themselves and experience powerful changes in the way we see our world. They become awakened to their gifts and their power to heal others. Become part of this ever-growing worldwide family of unique, pure energy healing practitioners. Discover how amazing you truly are. Go to www www.markbayerski.com It could just change your life forever. Introducing the H2O app, a powerful water structure and application that programs vibrational energies into water through the use of different sound frequencies. Once programmed, the use of water for drinking, cooking, bathing. Give it to your friends and colleagues or spread it around the garden. The list goes on. It's not just water that the app can be used for either. It's great for programming crystals too. The H2O app is free to download and is available on both Android and Apple platforms. For further information, go to h2oapp.online. 
you lost access to important data from a computer hard drive, mobile phone, or other storage device. Maybe you have a broken hard drive containing years of information, or a smartphone that no longer works from which you'd like the pictures, movies, and chats recovered. If you would like to recover data from any type of digital device, including desktop and laptop computers, external hard drives, cameras, smartphones, NAS, and RAID servers, then contact Data Clinic today at dataclinic.co.uk now. Asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on richieallen.co.uk. Fab Radio 2 in Manchester and TriggerWarning.tv. Welcome back to the most listened to independent radio show in Europe. It's your Richie Allen Show. Welcome back to the programme. A huge amount of interest in this. Faisal has tweeted me. Faisal, I'm going to tweet you back there. Um, tell me what SES stands for. It's It's been a long day and it's very warm in the studio. My brain could be in uh, freeze mode. Uh, but Faisal asks the question. I will put it to uh, Eric Faisal uh, in a second. A lot of interest in this. Hi to Gojira, who, along with my uh, friend and colleague, Jean Ann Crowley, mentions that the Black Mirror television series has uh, covered this issue. Um, and Gojira says, well, they don't call them TV programs in inverted commas for no reason yeah that series of television programs is terrific looking at a dystopian future and the effects of technology on humanity in the future and uh, let me just move up there uh hi to jp in manchester a number of people have asked about the skripals Yulia Skripal and her father, Sergei, the Russian double agent, people are asking, or just putting the point out there, that maybe they weren't poisoned at all, but maybe they were targeted individuals, or at least he was, and maybe she was caught up in the crossfire, because if they had been targeted by a very serious nerve agent, well, maybe they would have died, but they seem to have made an absolutely... Uh, tip top recovery so that's a an interesting one dr eric t carlson is our guest gang stalking mind control cults dot com is his website i've already tweeted it out um very serious academic eric professor emeritus of geography at california state university these days very well known in independent media circles for his um i would say groundbreaking research into gang stalking mind control directed energy weapons and of course um cults as well eric thanks so much for staying with us great to have you back on the program it's interesting that people are talking about the skripals and novichok and of course there's no evidence they were poisoned it seems to be a bit of nonsense people are saying well you know it sounds like no pun intended sounds like but it sounds like they they have the technology to make life very uncomfortable for the skripals without using poison Oh my, <laughs> yes. Well, you know, this is a non-touch torture. We have, uh, you know, Tesla technology, electronic weapons, non-lethal weapons as they're called. We've had in the United States a revolution in military affairs in the 80s uh, in which they said, well, we can't go nuclear, we'll blow the whole world up. So let's, and we don't wanna, you know, necessarily go nation state against nation state. Let's figure out ways to go after problematic individuals and groups using um, non-lethal weapons. So this became the, this and psychological warfare became a major thrust. Information warfare is one word they call for it. But they have lots and lots of terms for what they're doing. Um, and yes, uh, the, there's many, many programs and experiments that I think people are now in. We have to realize, uh, Richie, that back in the MK Ultra days, uh, which is the 50s and 60s and 70s, there were at least 149 sub-programs going at some 80 major institutions in the United States covering all kinds of experiments and how drugs and, and chemicals and biologicals and electronic uh, um, weapons can be used to alter the consciousness of humans and to control them. And it's right there at the beginning in 1953, the mandate was to find ways to control others' behavior, uh, e even when it's against their self-interest and their sense of self-preservation. So what, what they were going through orig going for originally is, is uh, creating human robots, um, remote-controlled human robots. And now I think 
uh, they've long past figured out how to do this, and we're seeing lots and lots of applications. But if you don't mind, uh, Richie, can I give the name of this article that I've just finished because it will segment into my new word for gang stalking? Uh, this of course, is, of course, uh, Sam. And if you, just, I'll tweet it yeah. while you, I'll, I'll tweet, if you want to send me a link to it, I, I probably have it here, but I'll, I'll, I will tweet it out there as well, and we'll get people to <laughs> yeah, uh, make I, it I go think viral. I'll send it to you. I'll send it again. But this, I've just put together an attempt to understand the program. Uh, this particular post is on my gang stalking mind control cults dot com website under the subheading gang stalking, which is the far left. It's the first one is called precursors, components, Got it. and in, and inferred structure and goals of syndicate, corporate, government, military, intelligences, GOGS, new Gestapo, slash tech, qui bono, qui bono. Okay, so uh, let, me, let me define GOGS, new Gestapo, which I think is a better term than gang stalking. GOGS, new Gestapo is an acronym that I invented. Uh, it's, it's, it stands for Global Organized Gang Stalking, Neuro warfare groups, mind war, electronic surveillance, slavery, tracking, targeting, torture, and psyops operations. And tech stands for the electronic concentration camp. So no longer do we need to take into problematic individuals off to Guantanamo Bay or Abu Ghraib. We can bring the concentration camp to the individual electronically through satellites and uh, cell phone towers and uh, mobile platforms, et cetera. So the technology already exists, you know, to uh, enslave large parts of the population electronically. Now, many years ago, I used to, when I was a child, I used to listen to Eddie Murphy stand-up tapes. And this was, as a young Catholic boy, Eric, this was verboten. This was forbidden. You couldn't listen to this. You'd go to hell. And Eddie used to joke, Eddie used to joke about, this is back in the early 80s, so he used to joke about white people getting pissed on moonshine and just for the laugh, just for a goof, voting for Jesse Jackson. And then they would wake up the following morning and he would say, he won. He won the presidency. And I used to think when I was younger, well, if it, if it were only that easy, get people absolutely drunk and they will vote for who you want. And the more I learn about your field of expertise and your field of research, the more I think... Maybe it has been possible for a long time not to use technology on an entire population, but on certain pockets of a population to swing an election. It must have happened, Eric. It must have done. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, the, the CIA has been uh, involved in influence mapping and perception management for a long time. So not only in you know the United States where they do it, but they'll do it in other countries to try to identify those individuals who might you know potentially stand in the way of, of whatever public government they want to uh, to put in power, and then they, they they call those people insurgents, and then what they do is they give that list of names to the military, and the military then goes ahead and does the counterinsurgency, yeah. in other words, kills them. <laughs> And uh, this has been going on, you know, for many decades. Uh, certainly the Phoenix program in, in Vietnam was an example. The death squads of Central and South America, Operation Condor, you know, down the down the list. Uh, FBI's COINTELPRO, um, you know, targeted leftist groups in the 50s, 60s and 70s. And really the gang stalking or GOG's new Gestapo, as I call it, is, is simply an updated version of these with the ticked the total individual control technology, the tech, the uh, the electronic concentration camp, and the neural warfare component uh, now highly, I would say very highly uh, advanced uh, to the point where I think they're not only mapping people's brains, but I think they're probably also trying to clone people. And some would say that they've, uh, they've achieved that. And I can't say, but uh, certainly you read about that. And I believe that that is an attempt that they're making. Mapping people and, and, and cloning people in their brains. It's, it sounds like science fiction, but, you know, I believe, not because I want to believe it or because I'm trying to sell it to my audience. I'm not. I believe it because I believe it is science fact. I've seen enough evidence. And, you know, what I love about what you've been doing since we last spoke, you know, providing these witnesses like the former FBI agent, it's hugely important to be able to do that. 
you know, I believe ultimately that the, 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 the upper echelons, the elites, they couldn't care less who is president of any one country or another. But it's important that they preserve the illusion of democracy. So maybe at times they've used technology to sometimes maybe dissuade, that's, that's a good word, to dissuade people from going out to vote if they thought that, you know, a Democratic or, or a Republican was a shoe in well, we need to keep the illusion of democracy, so let's just, let's help them. Without stuffing ballot boxes, they could have done it. They could have gotten, you know, people maybe to, without realising it, maybe vote for a left-wing candidate or even persuaded some Republicans just not to turn up. Maybe people didn't realise what was going on. This is important stuff. It's 11 minutes past the hour. Dr. Eric T. Carson is going to stay with me for another 25 to 30 minutes if we can keep him for that long because we want to talk about 5G now, fifth generation technology. And we've talked quite a bit about that on the programme in the last few months since Christmas anyway. We've heard from Mark Steele, of course. We've heard from others talking about the rollout of this and the human health implications for it. It sounds very much, Eric, like this... 5G, which for people who don't understand what it is, we used to have 3G, 4G. This is all about connectivity for smart devices, for mobile devices. They're saying this is going to be much quicker, much more convenient, even though we don't really need that sort of speed. 4G is fast enough anyway. But 5G is going to carry this on to the next level. Is that really what it's going to do? Tell us what 5G is, what you see it as being meant to do. Well, Richie, I think you probably know more about 5G than I do. I've heard, you know, people like Anthony Patch talk a little bit about it, and I know a little bit about the Internet of Things, but that's not really where I've put my yeah. energy. Um, I, uh, it sounds, you know, I would be very suspicious of this technology in the sense that it would just kind of lock down uh, electronically the, uh, the planet and, 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 tend, and tend to hive us to, in together. I think part of the research that, that the Pentagon and others have been doing, and universities certainly, is uh, you know looking at what they call net-centric warfare. Uh, you know, instead of you know just two entities smashing up against each other, let's 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 talk about the battle swarm. Let's talk about coordinating attacks from all kinds of directions, which indeed is what happens to the average TI on the street when uh, all these stalkers are coordinated to do these psychological attacks and street theater against them. That's an example of battle swarming, and that's also an example of net-centric warfare. So these capabilities are already there for the military, and they use a device, I believe, I've, I've read Mark Rich's book, uh, uh, New World War, Revolu Revolutionary Methods for Political Control, and he goes through all kinds of patents and all kinds of position papers by the different branches of the military and what we're going to do and the terms we use and the acronyms we have, et cetera. And it would seem to me that what they do to, to coordinate these attacks on TIs is they use a device called a C4ISR, uh, which stands for uh, Command and Control uh, Computer Communications Intelligence Surveillance Reconnaissance, C4ISR, which is more or less you know, central to this whole business of net-centric warfare. And there's a journal by that name, Net-Centric Warfare, C4ISR, uh, that's been out in the military since uh, 2002. And I think that this is how, this is a mobile war room that the military or another group can use to coordinate attacks against TIs. Now, why would they go to such a tremendous expense and to such trouble to attack almost random individuals in a whole series of different countries. I think it has to do again with this cybernetics goal, this transhumanism, the mapping of the human brain. But I, you know, again, I'm investigating. Nobody wrote me a letter and said, okay, now, you know, you're in this program and here's yeah. what, what we're going to do and here's why we're going to do it. So, you know, we are all learning as fast as we can and trying to uh, defend ourselves and each other from uh, these kinds of attacks. I, I think it's clear that they uh, they don't put a high priority on on the uh, the rights of the individual citizen. Um, that they, they they as Doug Valentine expertly excellently put it in his book, uh, the CIA as organized crime, uh, how illegal operations corrupt America and the world. He said, uh, you know, the CIA looks at all at everyone as either a cannon fodder or a guinea pig, and it would seem to be true. A couple of things I'm really interested in. I'm obviously I'm interested in all of this, 
But reading your article today, which which I did obviously in advance of you coming on, and I have tweeted it out now a couple of times, gangstalking, mind control, cults.com. There's a couple of very interesting things. Depopulation. And that's come up on this programme many times over the years when talking about different agendas. Agenda 21, Agenda 30, but not just those agendas by name, but talking about different ways of calling the population and coming after people. That's very serious. But it's also a very interesting one. And that is, and I want you to talk about this as best as you can, ushering in Satan's Antichrist kingdom on earth. That's fascinating, that. To somebody who is a lapsed Catholic, and I don't say that for a laugh, I, I am. I, I would say I'm probably agnostic stroke atheist, probably more leaning towards atheist. Um, t- talk to us about Satan's Antichrist kingdom on earth. So this has got more spiritual... I suppose, consequences, or it's got a more spiritual aspect to it as well, Eric. Well, certainly based on my research and experience, this is very true. Uh, and a lot of the TIs will, will you know, talk about the, the living hell they are put through and how there is a very strong satanic component to it. Um, my own research, you know, on the cults and, and mind control and everything is that these are satanically energized um, uh devices of the ruling elite uh, to control uh, the masses. And then, yes, they do have a depopulation agenda in, in store for us. And they, they've always believed that, you know, they've got to get rid of uh, the useless eaters, uh, got to cull the, the herd, as it were. Um, but, yeah, the satanic component, I think if one were to read a series of books, one would get a, get the sense. Uh, Dr. Michael E. Michael Jones, Catholic, uh, the Jewish revolutionary spirit, and its impact upon human history. 1,200 pages. I recommend it highly. He's a, a PhD in English and uh, is the editor of a magazine called Culture Wars, a book by another Catholic, uh, uh, Hugh Aikens, Synagogue, Synagogue Rising. It's about 800 pages. And I think he nails it correctly, saying that Israel is a lot behind a lot of these things, including the global police state that is forming around us now. And I'm sure uh, you know, the gang stalking is is uh, certainly part of that. Uh, another book, uh, Michael Hoffman, uh, a scholar who wrote a book, 1100 pages, Judaism Discovered. And uh, the subtitle of that book is quite interesting. Uh, it is uh, um, a study of the anti-biblical religion of racism, self-worship, superstition and deceit. Now, I realize this is not politically correct and I don't hate anybody or any group. But we have to figure out where this is coming from. And I've done my best to try to figure out where it's coming from. And, uh, you know, Jesus says some pretty pointed things to the Pharisees. Uh, Ye are of your father the devil, and his lusts ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and a liar and the father of lies, blah, 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 blah. Well, it would appear that this this group, you call them the synagogue of Satan, you can call them Rothschild, Kazarian Mafia, you can call them whatever you want. Um, and their and their you know front groups etc. And they're not Jews. Um, and, and, and I'm not saying this to be politically correct because I bash the bejesus out of the state of Israel on a nightly basis and Zionism, but they're not Jews. And because 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 obviously there will be people listening to this program who identify as Jews, and there will be people listening who identify as Muslims. And you know Jews will say, "Oh, here we go again," you know. The Jews are responsible for everything. If in doubt, blame the Jews. But that's not the case. That's genuinely not the case. They're not Jews, whatever these things are, these these people. Um, and Zionism is a cover for what these people do. I've always believed that anyway, Eric. Are we saying that those behind it at the very, very top, and I've had researchers on this program over the years, people who, whom I have a lot of respect for, and they believe what I'm going to say now. They believe that those pushing this at the very top levels of it, they do worship dark energies or dark entities. And they absolutely believe that. And some of the brightest people I've ever met, the most rational people who've been researching the whole gamut of human history for years and years, they absolutely believe that at the very top of this, there are people who they swear allegiance to a darker entity, multidimensional or interdimensional entities. What do you think, Eric? Oh, absolutely. And, and I've done quite a bit of research about the Illuminati. You know, the Bavarian Illuminati formed in 1776 by Adam Weishaupt, 
for the Rothschilds and apparently a group of very, very powerful business people in Germany uh, developed a plan for world takeover that would accomplish several objectives, uh, destroy the nation state, destroy the family, destroy private property, destroy all religion. And, you know, if you ask me, this particular program will accomplish all of those goals. And um, and I think that, you know, the goal of this uh, group was to uh, destroy all these other institutions so that uh, this satanic kingdom can be realized. Um, and I see what's happening with the transhumanism and the depopulation agenda and so much of the corruption we see in our nations as is part of this same agenda. So these people, you can call them what you want, but they have written out their plans and uh, uh, many, many, many times. And I've got a section on my uh, 911nwo.com website and my gangstalkingmindcontrol.cults.com website called The Controllers. And there's many, many posts. And again, you can call them what you want, but there's lots and lots of statements uh, talking about how this particular group plans uh, to take over the world. And uh, it would appear that their agenda is uh, well nigh uh, to being accomplished. And it's hidden. Um, it's hidden. You know, Eric, I, I came out of commercial media and there was a time when I never spoke about the politics of the Middle East and I never spoke about Zionism. And I never spoke about international financiers because they were taboo subjects. And I think one of the ways this is kept hidden from the public is, is that the people who are ultimately behind this, they hide behind the Zionism which they created, Judaism which they created, they created everything, Christianity, um, um, Islam, and they, they, they use that excuse then whenever anybody talks about it, well, these are just anti-Semitic tropes. These people are just anti-Semitic tropes who hate the Jews. But this is disgusting, and it's disgustingly false because the Jews are not responsible for any of this, no more than, you know, West African Catholics are or Native Americans are. It's got nothing to do with them. It's far, far, far deeper than that. And Zionism is just a great mask for this to be hidden behind. That's what I've come to believe anyway. And that's why you can't talk about any of this stuff, because people shut it down immediately with, oh, well, it's racism. Oh, David Icke is a racist. Oh, and, and they name anybody. Jordan Maxwell, racist. Anybody, no matter what their field of research is. And it's absolutely not true. It's not about bashing Jews. Jews are as oblivious to this. You know, I, I did a, an article recently, and uh, most of my articles, they're not read very widely. They, they've, they've got a small readership. But I, I did an article, and in, in it I said... Jews are as oblivious to who the Rothschilds, the Warburgs, the Oppenheimers and the Rockefellers are as the rest of us. And it's true. It's absolutely true. It's one of the great ways to hide this and keep it hidden and keep it secret is bring in the race card when it's got nothing to do with Jews. It's not a Jewish conspiracy. It never was. It never will be. It's far deeper. At least that's my uh, take on it anyway. And Eric, getting it out there. I mean, how does it go? And I, I know I've asked you this before. But I am compelled to ask it again. How does a man of academia, of critical thinking, an established man in society, how do you even begin to talk about these things that we've just been talking about, the satanic element of it, without your peers and your neighbours saying, Eric, have you lost your marbles? How, how, how do you live with that? How do you cope with that? Well, you know, embedded in the whole gang st uh, stalking or... Gog's new Gestapo structure is, uh, and, and they did this a lot of work on this back in the Macy conferences uh, when uh, Gregory Bateson, a uh, six foot eight inch uh, uh, MI6 CIA guy from Britain uh, who was involved in the Macy conferences, he says, we want to figure out how to mimic the symptoms of schizophrenia. So to, to create uh, symptoms that would look like uh, that could be diagnosed as schizophrenia. Well, that's what this whole program does. It creates symptoms. Uh, this is why I resist talking about my symptoms. They want you to talk about your symptoms because then they can roll out their psychologists and they get their diagnostic and statistical manual, DSM-5, and says, oh, you say you're hearing voices? Well, delusional. Uh, people are following you? Oh, uh, paranoid. Um, so you're, you know, <laughs> this is how well thought it's thought out this whole thing is. And, you know, if you look at the Soviet Union and all the way they handled their political dissidents, they used the psychiatric reprisal. 
They said they were crazy. They put them in institutions and they got rid of them that way. And this is very much the same thing. It's it's a way to neutralize dissenters and dissent uh, by uh, getting society to uh, reject them at all levels, including psychiatrists and psychologists who will not only use them as non-consensual experimentees, but also say they're crazy. This is one of the great injustices of all time. Um, uh, now you asked me, uh, you know, how I how I present this. Uh, Dr. Ronnie Kilda was the chief medical officer of Northern Finland and a political insider for many years, uh, many advanced degrees, and also a targeted individual. And she wrote a book called Bright Light on Black Shadows. Now, I don't agree with everything she says, uh, but she says here, the elite have plans to get rid of two thirds of the world's population with electromagnetic warfare, chemical warfare, and psychological warfare. Mind control MK is listed as a, quote, non-lethal weapon by the military. But in 2002, the United Nations Institute for Disarmament Research in Geneva, Switzerland, designated mind control as a weapon of mass destruction, along with nuclear bombs. This technology links the brains of people via implanted microchips to satellites controlled by ground-based supercomputers. That's a very key sentence although they don't need the microchips anymore. Uh, then she says, this is the most important policy of the United States. With this invisible and silent weapon, they can control people and populations, biological and electronic systems via space satellites. All the US military branches are involved in the development of the technology in cooperation with civil institutions like the Department of Health in what is known as the Neural Network Association. Neural, of course, means mind. At their 1991 conference, it was revealed that they submitted and endorsed over 1,000 projects, 1991, in brain computer technology at 350 medical centers, universities, etc. Okay, if you draw a straight line between, you know, how many they had in uh, MK Ultra, which was about 80, and then uh, 1991, 350. Well, we, we're in the thousands now. Uh, the best way to control people without their knowledge is through mind control. According to the CIA director in 1972, mind control means a world where every thought, emotion, observation, and need is controlled. Cybernetics, full neurological control and communication, has been in use since the 1940s without the knowledge of the public. The objectives are behavior modification and influencing mental and bodily functions, processes, and emotions remotely through computer satellite links. Directed mm -hmm. energy weapons, mostly EMF, electromagnetic frequency, and acoustic weapons act on the psyche and the body of human beings and all living creatures. They have been called by many names, psychophysical weapons, weapons of information warfare, psychotronic weapons, cognitive weapons, neurological weapons, mind invasive weapons, mind control and electronic harassment weapons, remote neural monitoring, active denial systems, weapons of electronic warfare, means of neuro linguistic programming, means for behavior modification, means of influence, tech, influence technology, computerized brainwashing machines, devices to zombify people, means to induce mental and physical illness, means for hostile surveillance, people zappers, and weapons of mass destruction. Quite and the Swedish military research declares in their report of activities that their goal is to direct the cognitive functions of people for a lifetime. Hey, there's the Truman Show for you. <laughs> Unbelievable. Do, do, do you know, when I don't know how true it is, I've never been hypnotized. Um, I know people who have been. Many years ago, it was recommended I do a course of hypnotherapy, but I didn't do it anyway. But long story short, at times a hypnotherapist might dim the lights in the room and ask you to focus on a on a pinprick light, a bright light, and you maybe you become more suggestible when you're focused in on something like that. I think that's the way it is. You become more suggestible. This might sound like a stupid question, but I was brought up to believe there are no such thing things as stupid questions. I wonder, has Facebook and Twitter, have they become that pinprick light in terms of the vast majority of the world's population is now constantly online staring at Facebook, which is a white screen with a blue border and text. And I wonder, is using Facebook all the time 
and using Twitter and using apps on smartphones, are we making ourselves more suggestible and therefore more open to being affected by the technology? What do you think? Oh, I think so. That's probably one of many goals. I mean, <laughs> the, the people uh, on Facebook are giving out all their personal information for free to yeah. the intelligence agencies. And, uh, you know, so in that sense, the intelligence agencies are just taking all that data and storing it in case they need it in the future. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, we're, our minds are being hived in, I think, through this process so that uh, the reality of these people staring at these tiny little, you know, gizmos in their hand uh, is is really circumscribed, isn't it, yeah. uh, Richie? I mean, I, I played baseball and football when I was a kid, and I've spent a lot of time in the mountains hiking and climbing and skiing. And uh, I, you know, I've got a beautiful world that I relate to, but uh, a lot of these people have really narrowed this this world down to what they see in their little gizmos, and I think it's tragic. Uh, I think it also has to have an impact on their mental functioning. It does. Uh, it, mu it must make them more suggestible. Some some celebrities, some UK ce celebrities, took some pictures recently of their teenage children in beauty spots, Eric. Some, some, the UK, like every country, the UK has its beauty areas, wonderful uh, forests, got beautiful hills, countryside, wonderful here. And David Bedil, who's an English stand-up comedian, funny guy, he took a picture recently of his son in a beautiful nature spot and the kid is sitting on a rock surrounded by a beautiful lake and trees and animals and he's glued to the phone. And he's in a trance of sorts. That's what I was getting. I know you know yeah. what I was getting at. Some of our listeners are tweeting me saying, uh, you know, have I had a drink? What are you talking about, Richie? I'm, I'm thinking that when you're at that, when it's in your hand all the time, you're looking at it, you are, it is trance inducing. Therefore, the technology that Eric is looking into and talking about, maybe that technology finds it easier to affect those addicted to these devices and looking at Facebook, you know, 15 hours a day. That's just the point I was making. And um, it worries me that what it's doing to, to, to children, younger children. Yeah, we see it all the time. I'm sure you see it. You're in a beautiful part of the world, Eric. You must see it when you go out. You must see children looking at tablets and not looking at beautiful trees and red squirrels and deer and everything else. They're looking at the bloody tablet, glued to it. And it must be leaving them wide open to other things. That's all I was saying. Go ahead. Yeah, I think this process of transformation has been going on for a long time. Of course, the TV is fantastically hypnotic, and you and I grew up with that as well, you know. So yeah. somehow we have to break out of that, and I think it's deliberately hypnotic. Um, but let me just, you know, for you know, to address some of the other issues, let me finish with what Dr. Ronnie Kild is saying on on that's on my my recent post. She says on July twenty first, nineteen ninety four, the U.S. Department of Defense proposed that non-lethal weapons be used against anyone engaged in activities that DOD opposed. In other words, somebody protesting their wars. Wow. So there's the dissidence uh, element. That could include almost anyone. DOD's potential enemies may be countercultural individuals, those with opposing political viewpoints, economic competitors, biological und undesirables, etc. From my point of view, this is Ronnie Kilda, the uses of this new technology philosophically are comparable to and amount to the biblical fall of man, the eviction from paradise, the all-encompassing thought reading and mind influencing capacity of this technology divides man into two encampments, those few godlike people who are allowed to use these means and all others whose freedom and free will is being taken away. And then she says, we've been surprised to hear about these school and shopping center shootings. How many realize that these are tests where mind control programming is used? to create a human robot. The serial killer is a victim himself, being programmed to be an emotionless robot and following orders to kill. My the God. real killers sit behind computers and send ele electromagnetic beams to his brain. And it's um, a satanic, and it's a, this, yeah. The yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry for interrupting you. It's a satanic blood sacrifice, isn't it? It's not so much that he couldn't care less about the victims of these shootings. That's an extended element of it. It's it's a blood sacrifice, Eric. Sorry for interrupting you. Go ahead. Well, that could be a component of it. Uh, yeah, yeah, again, the top people are Satanists. But then she says the Secret Services and their sabotage and terror departments are the biggest terrorists in the world and work together with the mafia. That was the case even in World War II, as has been published decades ago. 
Now, these are very important points, which is why I, I you know, I, I bring them up and why I'm, I'm happy to give them, uh, give credit to Dr. Ronnie Kilda uh, for bringing them up. Because again, she was murdered by this program after being tortured in it for 30 years. And she was one of the greatest uh, people speaking out against it during her lifetime. Uh, so you can go and Google some of her uh, YouTube uh, uh, talks on this topic, and uh, but she was killed in 2015, and I think murdered is the correct term. So we're talking about crimes against humanity uh, that break all, you know, the Geneva Accords and every United Nations law, and uh, you know, all of the Bill of Rights rights are being violated. We have essentially lawless governments in power now, who have shredded the contract that they have. Uh, have supposedly uh, agreed to uh, serve the people. And it's an outrage, and by the way. It is an outrage that a man of your qualifications, and that's not to deify you or put you on a pedestal, but a man with your background saying what it is you're saying with the, with the, with the help of former FBI agents and others. It is just a disgrace and, and, and a great illustration of how impotent our media is, because this deserves to be covered, even if the media wants to be very sceptical about it, and if they want to have, you know, uh, you, you know, a kind of a hostile approach to it, it has to be covered. You know, we, we, we it, this is in the public interest. An academic, a professor emeritus of a major university, is doing this research. He's meeting FBI agents and others. This is in the bloody public interest but not a whisper. And I know, or at least I presume to know, Eric, you've sent articles and information, I'm sure, to various journalists, I'm sure to various television stations, and I'm pretty sure you never got a reply, right? Well, actually, Richie, I've sent some things to uh, politicians. I sent uh, to Governor Jerry Brown and to President uh, Obama and things like that back in the, you know 2010, et cetera. Um, and of course, never got a reply. Uh, concerning things like the global warming issue, which we've talked about, I, I am a little savvy when it comes to who I talk to about this. And, you know, this is really where the alternative media like yourself are so critical, uh, because, like you say, the, the mainstream media is, is uh, mostly silent on this. The government is silent. And of course, if this is the major policy of the United States, they're under directives. Uh, they're they're gagged. Um, and uh, so we have a secret Gestapo system in process, in, in progress, uh, in America and in the world. And we're not supposed to know about it. We're not supposed to talk about it. And yet, you know, by my reckoning, there must be many, many millions who are perpetrating this system and, uh, and, and millions who are the targets. So, you know, the, the cat's got to get out of the bag at some point, And I think the sooner the better. Uh, because I think if you turn neighbor against neighbor and if government starts killing its own people, um, something is terribly wrong and that needs to be addressed sooner than later. That's a terrific way to leave it for now, Eric. Thanks for coming back on. I want to again mention Eric's website, which I've tweeted out two or three times, three times, is gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com. You have been listening to Dr. Eric T. Carlson, Professor Emeritus of Geography at uh, California State University, a preeminent researcher into this field, gang stalking, cults, mind control. Check out his website. This is serious stuff. This is not conspiracy theory. It's conspiracy fact. I'm telling you, take my word for it. It really is. Eric, if you want the last word, it's yours. Just want to say thanks for giving us your time again today. And we won't leave it as long before we get you back on in the future. I can't believe it was nearly 10 months since you were on. So thanks again, and I'll give you the final word on it, and we'll leave it for today. Go ahead. Well, just thank you, Richie, for what you're doing, your courage. And, uh, you know, I think we all have to step up because I think free will itself is now on the table. Uh, I think the, the elite plans to, uh, you know, to get rid of it. They want to get rid of the middle class. They want to form a 1984 sort of society where there's a, a ruling elite that's cemented in position and a slave class and no middle class. And uh, that, of course, was what made America great was it had a strong middle class. They've been trying to destroy it for a long time. And this, of course, will will finish it off, I think, um, and accomplish various other 
draconian objective. So I really appreciate you uh, having me on and, and uh, I look forward to our next talk, Richie. Thanks so much. You're very welcome, Eric. Thank you. Look after yourself. That was Dr. Eric T. Carstrom uh, live with us tonight. Great to have Eric back on the programme. Again, an indictment on the mainstream media that a man with Eric's background and training is coming on programmes like this and isn't being interviewed and spoken to on national media. But maybe we, I don't know, maybe in the near future we'll overtake, collectively we'll overtake the mainstream media in terms of our reach and our audience sizes and it won't matter anymore. Check out Eric's website again. It's gangstalking mind control cults.com. I've tweeted uh, several links to that. Do bookmark the site. There is a lot of information on there and he backs up his claims, Eric. The ones that he says are facts. He backs them up with evidence. Go to that website and check it out now. Before um, we leave this subject, I want to mention again the information given to me by Mark Moore earlier on. There is a YouTube channel called TI Television. TI standing for Targeted Individuals. And that is a website, excuse me, a YouTube channel which is dedicated to putting out there the testimonies of targeted individuals. They want to expose this and they want to get this information to a wider audience. TI Television on YouTube. They have set up a helpline. Now Mark tells me that they're on the arm. That's a great American colloquialism there. They're on the arm, meaning that they're good people and they're interested in hearing from people who have experienced it or who believe they are experiencing it. So they've given me a number and the number is 07843712542. Again, it's obviously a UK mobile number. So you would drop the zero and put plus four four if you are outside the UK. But it's 07843 Seven one two five four two, and the person who will answer that, and don't go ringing that, by the way, at stupid o'clock. I would give it a daytime call. I wouldn't ring it in the nighttime. Uh, but the person who will answer is a person called Tesh T E S H. So thanks to Mark for sharing that uh, information with me today. I will put together a post on that and put it on Facebook a little bit later on.